Today we're going to show how to refinish a plastic picture frame to look like it's made of rusted sheet metal. Now we've covered the rust uh, technique before, but in this video we're going to show some additional techniques to really punch up the realism on uh, props like this and parts like this where you're simulating uh, rusted iron or steel. Now one of the first little tricks we're going to do to make this look like it's welded steel is create the welds. And I almost hate to give this away. I use a hot glue gun to create welds. And you'd be surprised how convincing this is. Now in addition to our, our faux welds here we're creating, we also want to add some hardware that, that appears to, uh, to be sheet metal screws, which uh, for some strange reason people associate bolts and screws with heavy metal. So uh, just hot gluing some fake bolt heads on. Now these particular bolts and screws are some that I cast in resin and I'm just hot gluing in place here. But keep in mind you could actually use real sheet metal screws just cut off and again either hot glued or use some epoxy or super glue to anchor those in place. But uh, again, I'd, for some reason uh, people associate bolts and screws and such with steel so adding this little touch here just really adds a lot to the realism of a piece like this. Now once our screw heads are in place we're ready to start applying our primer. Now this is the Primit Primer, and keep in mind that this is a, a very crucial stage. You don't want to skip this because the Primit Primer bonds incredibly well to plastic surfaces like this. So when in doubt, a, a good coat of this or a couple of coats of this over your plastic surface will just give you that much more insurance that your metal coating is going to stay put where you apply it. Now for this frame, we're applying this with a brush. But keep in mind you can also spray this on using an HVLP gun. Uh, I usually prefer to use an HVLP sprayer for this kind of application, but here uh, on something this small it just makes much more sense to brush this on. But keep in mind as you see here it does leave some brush strokes when you're applying it with a cheap brush like this. So what I do is I apply that primet all over the surface and then I go back and stipple out those brush strokes. And to do this you want to move fast because you don't want to wind up having some of that dry on you and be unable to remove those brush strokes. But that'll also force it into those detailed areas like around those screw heads and places like that. So just stippling that out will remove those brush strokes and any lines in your uh, primer. Now keep in mind that once your primate primer is applied you want to give that a couple of hours to completely dry and cure to allow for that metal coating to really bond to it well. So once you've finished uh, brushing that on and stippling out the uh, surface to remove any kind of brush strokes you're ready to allow that to dry and completely cure. Once the primate has dried, you're ready to apply your iron bee metal coating. And you want to make sure you shake that up really good before use because it does contain real iron particles and those need to be properly suspended before application. So make sure you shake that up and start your application process. When you paint this on, you want to make sure you apply uniform coating all over the surface for the first coat. This first coating will serve as a base coat, so you want to make sure that you get total coverage just in case uh, once you oxidize the second coating you don't want any uh, bare plastic showing through. So you want to make sure you get good even coverage with this first coat and allow that to completely dry before moving on to the second coat. Now on average it's a good idea to allow the metal coating to dry for about an hour before you apply the second coat. And keep in mind there's no hard fast rule about two coats. You could apply more than that, but uh, less than that would be difficult to do and still achieve a realistic effect. Now you'll notice on our second coat we're stippling this on and we also stippled out the brush strokes on the first, uh, the first coat. But that's crucial on the second coat that you stipple that surface to remove any brush marks so that you get a, a highly textured surface that gives more surface area for the patina to react with. And speaking of patina, it's crucial that you apply your patina while your metal coating is still wet. You'll find that once the, once the metal coating dries, it seals in those metal particles and will make it impossible for those particles to react with the patina. 
Now for the best working environment, I recommend a moderate temperature of about 70 to 80 degrees and a very high humidity. If you have low humidity and high temperature, it's going to be very difficult to get a good rich reaction. Now at this point, our color has developed for about a day and a half. Uh, after a couple of days, you'll find you get a good rich rust forming. Uh, again, at that average humidity and uh, you know, a decent temperature of about 70 degrees. And once it's dry to the touch, you're ready to proceed with the next step. And one of the things I do that just to me really adds a lot of realism is dry brushing a little bit of the silver bee coating over uh, the welds and the corners and uh, you know any exposed hardware that would naturally abrade and scuff with use. And what that does is just gives that appearance of uh, iron or uh, the steel abraded and showing through that rust. And you'll find that that little extra touch there, especially on those welds, just adds a lot more realism to the piece. And it just takes a small amount of the silver bee to achieve that effect. So you wanna make sure when you're dry brushing, just get a minimal amount of that silver bee on your brush in order to get that effect. And there you see just a light dusting of that gets that effect of that uh, steel showing back through the rust. And once you've completed that, you have a couple of options. You can either let this dry and seal it with a matte sealer, like uh, the ClearGuard matte, or you can leave it as is, is what we refer to as a living patina, where it'll continue to change slightly over time as that rust might migrate a little bit. Uh, but overall, it'll maintain a nice rusty appearance, and you're ready to install your pictures into it. So there you have your final rusted picture frame with the hardware and the fake welds in place. And you'll see it achieves a very realistic rusted effect. And we have people come through our shop all the time commenting on how we hung such a heavy steel frame to our drywall uh, walls here. So it gives a very convincing rusted metal appearance. And it works well over a lot of different surfaces, everything from cardboard, to plastic, to even uh, other metals like aluminum or copper. And of course, you can find all the materials at brickintheyard.com.